Hey guys, welcome back. So today I want to talk about one of America's favorite rifles. Not the M14, but the Mini 14. The Mini 14 was an icon when I was a kid. My best friend had a Mini 14. I spent a lot of time shooting it. Now my first centerfire rifle was an AR-15, but we had often sit out in the pastures of Kansas and shoot our Mini 14 and AR-15 and, and compare their accuracy and all that other stuff, even reliability. And I didn't really have much interest in the guns back then. I didn't even have much interest in the M14. I was really focused on the AR-15. And as I got older, I had a passing interest in the Mini 14, but it never really checked any boxes for me because, I don't know, the AR was just a cooler rifle. But that doesn't take away from the history of this gun and the fact that so many people enjoy owning and shooting them. They even had a pretty good run with law enforcement for many years. But when you take a look at this rifle, most anti-gunners would agree, especially the wood-stocked version with the bare barrel. I do have the pick rail screwed onto the top, but you can take that off. But in its you know, original trim with the wooden stocks, most of the anti-gunners don't even give it any thought. They don't consider it to be a weapon of war, or an assault weapon, or whatever their catchphrase is for the week. They just ignore it. But in all reality, this gun has all the features of the AR-15 weapon of war. Ironically, pocket knives are weapons of war, but we won't get into all that. So we're going to talk about the Mini-14 today. I'm going to show you a quick transformation of this rifle from what you see here into something that the anti-gunners would immediately zero in on and go, you can't have that! And all I do is change one thing. So anyway, let's get started with today's video, take a closer look at the Mini-14, and razz the anti-gunners because they're morons. A lot of folks ask me, how can I get involved in the firearms business in that particular community? And one of the best ways to do that is to become a gunsmith. Every gunsmith I know is just overbooked with work. It's a very good living. And so if you would like to become a gunsmith, you need to go to a gunsmithing school or become an apprentice for an existing gunsmith. But Modern Gun School is an accredited college that also works with veterans in the GI Bill, where you can go and get a degree from accredited college in gunsmithing and then go out and start your own gunsmithing business which I think is a really great option. Again, throughout my entire life, gunsmiths have always been able to earn a really good living, assuming they have a really strong work ethic. So please check out Modern Gun School. I do have a link in the video description below. While the Mini-14 looks and functions very similar to the M14 military rifle, it's not the same gun. But its manual of arms and how its safety works and how its basic operation works, it's very similar. Obviously, it was you know, inspired by the M14 rifle. And I think that's one of the reasons why so many people gravitate towards it, because the M14 does have a cult-like following. Now, it's not one of my favorite rifles, but that doesn't change the fact people love the thing. Now, the Mini-14 uses detachable magazines. You can get them in pretty much any, you know, size, anywhere from 10 rounds to however many you can dream up. But the standard magazine these days seems to be the 20-round magazine. And just like the M14, it just kind of rocks and locks in. It locks in the front and the rear of the magazine. Now, the gun has the exact same manual of arms, as I said. The safety is right here inside the trigger guard. So when you're ready to fire the gun, you just put your finger in, push the safety off, and pull the trigger. When you want to put the safety back on, just pull back on that safety. To charge it, you just grab the charging handle, pull it to the rear, let it go, and the weapon's ready to fire. So it's a very pleasant gun. The newer versions are actually pretty darn accurate. Some of the earlier ones, I've done videos with my really old one from the 70s, you can shoot about four or five inch group at 50 yards. These are much better, and this is a brand new production gun. So, just like the AR-15, this gun fires from a magazine, it fires as fast as you pull the trigger, and functionally, there's really not much difference outside of the basic operation, but in terms of pulling the trigger and the gun loading itself, it's really no different. But everybody wants to hate on the AR-15. So there was one version of the Mini-14 when I was a kid that piqued my interest, and that was the AC-556, which was a select fire version of the gun that was similar to this one, but had a different stock on it. Now, that particular gun, I must have been wildly inaccurate because that show ran for five seasons, and I don't think they ever killed anybody with one of the Mini-14s in that show, but I digress. So here we have the current production Mini-14. I did choose to get it with the flash hider on it. I have put the pick rail on top. Now all I have to do is get rid of this 
polymer stock, which in my opinion is functional, but not quite what I want. I want the Samson stock that was used on the AC556 and the gun that the A-Team used. And this is a new production stock. From my understanding, Ruger supplying the wood, Samson. Samson's now manufacturing these once again. You can get them both in stainless steel and blue. You're just gonna have to wait longer for the stainless steel version because that's the version everybody wants because they wanna put it on the stainless steel gun to look like the AC556. So anyway, to convert this thing into a weapon of war, all you have to do is pop the trigger guard off comes apart just like a mini or m14 come on get out of there ditch the traditional stock go for the much better looking folding stock drop that in there just like that and now we have with a longer barrel a little heavier profile barrel barrel an ac556 a team rifle right there so what's kind of cool about this gun is that you can rotate the stock down which then releases it so it'll swing open and now you have that folding stock there's a little stud right here on the side of the receiver and that's what holds it in the folded position so you just push a button right here by my index finger push that in this will rotate around you have a little lever right here on the end of the butt plate and when that comes around you just pull down on that lever and that allow you to fold the foot of the stock. There is a hole right inside the stock right there that's gonna go up to, not quite over that pin. So when it comes around, then you're gonna see a little U-shaped notch right here on the stock itself, the foot of the stock. It comes around and then you just kind of bring this up and push on it and it'll lock into place so it doesn't go anywhere. Very small, handy little package, very minimalistic with that tube stock on the side. I just love the way this thing looks. To open it, you just pull down on the foot, swing it open, and she's ready to go. So now all I need is a red dot sight, and I have one of the primary arm. This is either the uh, R10 or one of their classic versions. Red dot sight, we'll put that on there. Oh no, Gavin Newsom's going to want to pass the 28th Amendment to ban this now. Because now we have a modern weapon of war. <laughs> Anti-gunners are such idiots. All right. Somewhere Davy Hogg's going to start crying because here I go. Oh, I didn't zero this. Let's see if we hit steel at 50. It hit. <laughs> All right. This version of the Mini 14... I actually enjoy. Now, as I said, this thing will shoot two, two and a half inch groups at 100 yards, which is vastly improved over my very early version of the Mini 14 with the wooden stock on it. And it was a, I think it's a generation one gun. I did a video on it some time ago and I showed you the wild inaccuracies of it. This gun's much better. And so, yeah, with the pistol grip on it now, that wood mixed with the stainless steel and the side folding stock, mm -mm -mm. all sorts of freedom in this bad boy. All I need, I guess, is a 30-round magazine. Now, going back to when Bill Ruger was still alive, yeah, that old curmudgeon didn't really like guns much, even though he made them, it seems, because he wouldn't sell you a 20- or 30-round magazine unless you were in the military or law enforcement. Um, it wasn't until after his passing that Ruger kind of transformed as a company and became manufacturers of AR-15, started selling, you know, 20, 30-round magazines for their firearms to just anybody. So Ruger really kind of picked up steam after Bill Ruger passed away. But, you know, the old man, despite his shortcomings, was quite the genius, was an outstanding American businessman. It's just unfortunate that he didn't share our views on the Second Amendment. But this little gun really, really is cool and currently available if you want to pick up the Samson stock. Those are still out there. Again, you're going to wait a little bit longer for the stainless steel version. But if you put it together like this, you have to admit it's just a great looking rifle. It's kind of odd because you have this big shelf back here of nothingness. <laughs> But, again, I just love it because it just reminds me of my youth. And, of course, the A-Team. Mr. T. I know what you guys are asking yourself right now, or what you want to ask of me. Mac, how does it 80s hip fire? Well, given it was used by the A-Team, it does really, really well. And I wonder if I can bump fire it. Now let's find out. Get on in there. All right. 
All right, here we go. Oops. Oh yeah, my hand slipped off on the first one. That's a technicality. Anyway, so an 80s hip fires perfectly, does not take Glock mags, and it bump fires. It's awesome. This is just some Norma 55 grain ball. I wanna thank Norma for sending me the ammunition free of charge. Pretty good stuff. I really like their 308 ball. All right, so I got 10 rounds loaded. Start off at 100, 150, 200, 250, and 300. I should be able to hit them all. And this is just kind of a testament to the accuracy of the new rifles. It's 100, 150, 200, 250, And that was 300. Two solid hits at 300. So the gun is more than capable of really good accuracy, which again is a vast improvement over some of the earlier models. So if you're looking to pick one of these up, you can expect to get really good accuracy. This one's really reliable. I have seen one of the newer ones not work well, but Ruger will take care of you. Uh, this one runs just fine. The ergonomics on the Samson stock are actually pretty good. The pistol grip may look a little goofy, but the length of pull is good for my large frame. And everything about this gun is just really, really cool. I love it. All right, so for the Tide Pod generation out there that wants to take our guns away, um, yeah, good luck with that Davy Hogg and, and Harry Sison or whatever your name is. We'll just keep razzing you on Twitter. Hope you see the video. See that I mentioned you in here because you guys are a bunch of nut jobs <laughs> and we're not going to let you take our guns. All right, guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, please consider becoming part of our Patreon family. There's a link in the video description below. Also, right here on YouTube, you got the thanks button and the join button. You can support us right here on YouTube in the age of demonetization. Last but not least, please swing by and check us out at Copper Custom. Thank you for 15 years of support and we'll talk to you guys soon.